Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today uh, I'm going to be starting a little mini-series of sorts on kind of doing stuff with line traces. Basically, what a line trace is, it's, it's, uh, it's just an invisible line that gets kind of fired out into the world or, you know, drawn somewhere, and you can uh, use it the information based on what it hits to do cool things. So, for example, um, in a lot of modern first-person shooter games, right, they use these line traces, or it's called uh, hit scans, or, you know, ray casting, those are other words for it. Um, they use that stuff to kind of, uh, you know, apply damage to things, or play effects, and do other kind of stuff like that. So, uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So, first thing we're going to do is, well, first thing to notice is I'm in the first person example template, uh, but a lot of these concepts can apply to, you know, other other genres as well. Um, but we're going to go ahead and open up our first person character and we'll notice in here that there is this fire event uh, which currently it spawns a projectile, does some other cool stuff um, but we're going to hold alt click to break the link and we'll use this uh, fire button somewhere else. Okay, so just a quick quickly to show what this is doing right, this fire button, we'll go to edit, project settings, input and you can see here that they have the fire event under action mappings and it uses the left mouse button to um, kind of fire this event okay so basically whenever we press the left mouse button it will trigger you know whatever we want okay so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drag off of pressed and we're gonna type line trace uh, by channel okay there's some other options here like line trace for objects, multi-line traces, um, and I can go into these in more depth in later tutorials, but for now we're just going to focus on this line trace by channel. Okay, so what it asks for is it asks for a start location, um, you know, somewhere to start the trace from, an end location, somewhere to, you know, obviously end the trace from. Uh, it asks for a trace channel, so this channel is used for kind of uh, generating the collision events Right, so um, it has by default two channels here, visibility and camera. Um, by default, camera, the camera channel blocks everything. So I usually like to use that just because I don't need to worry about, um, you know, making sure that collisions on other things are set up properly, right, to make sure that they block visibility. So camera is usually a good one to go with, so we'll go with that. Next thing we'll look at is the kind of the actors to ignore. Right, so this just uh, is an array of actors that you can ignore, and you can drag off and say, "Make array," and then you can add any sort of any type of you know actors that you don't want to you know hit uh, into this array, and it will ignore it. So say you have like um, a you know a friendly uh, character you know actor in the game, um, you could use one of you could uh, plug them into the array here, and any shots you fire, you know, kind of it won't it won't do anything to that actor okay so there's something you can do there uh, by default it does ignore yourself so you don't need to worry about that um, so that's nice and then there's also this draw debug type and basically this is just for showing the line trace on the screen so that you can see it um, and kinda see what it's doing uh, so I usually like to say for duration here um, just so it shows up for a little while but then it goes away after a while and if you click this little drop down you can see kind of some of the other settings you can set uh, that help you do the debugging. Okay. So, anyways, um, next let's go ahead and do the start and end. So, how we're going to do this is we're going to use our camera here as the point that we want to start at uh, because you know it is kind of centered on the screen. Okay. So, we're going to uh, get our first person camera. Then we're going to say get world location. Okay, and we can plug that right into start. So it's going to start at the world location of our camera. Next, for the end location, we're going to say get forward vector. And this returns the kind of the x direction of our, um, you know, of, our, of wherever our camera is looking. So it's always going to return a forward value or whatever value is forward. Okay, now it is a normalized uh, value. So that means um, it's always going to be like negative one to one. Um, so, uh, because of that, if we were to simply plug it in here to end, it would only be, you know, one unit ahead, which, you know, isn't very helpful. So what we can do is take this value and say vector times float, 
And now whatever we multiply it by, that'll be how many units out into the world that it extends. So for guns, you know, you usually want to do something pretty long because guns can fire pretty far. So we'll say maybe 10,000 units. That could be a bit much, but again, you can, you can alter it to whatever works for you. Um, but then the next thing, which is very important, is to make sure that we take our, our start and say vector plus vector and add our start and our end together so that we get like an actual ending location. Because if we just multiply this and plug it in, it's not going to know where to, like, kind of, like, what it, where this location is. Okay, it's not going to know what that is. So you need to just do the addition there. All right. So now, uh, if we want, we can go ahead and try this out. If we press play and I left click, you can see it shows up. So now when it hits something, it's got a little red kind of box showing you where it hits. All right. And then when it hits and goes through, it is green. Okay. So there's just a kind of really basic example of how to set up a line trace. Um, in the next video, we'll look at, you know, kind of applying damage and doing some other stuff. So thanks for watching. If you liked the video, like or subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.